On today's episode, I'm going to take you with me for a 15 minute and $15 Goodwill bins challenge. I have to find at least eight things in 15 minutes and I only spent $15. Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video and for helping me to create my website to grow my business. Here we go. And welcome back to Desert DIY. If you are new here, my name is Corey. Today we are going to go to the Goodwill bins for a 15 minute Goodwill bin shopping challenge. I challenge myself to shop for only 15 minutes in the Goodwill bins, hitting every single one of the bins, and I wanted to find at least eight items, and I definitely did get more than eight items. I don't want to give away too much because the shopping trip is half the fun, but let's go shopping. Today is going to be a Goodwill Outlet Bins Challenge. I only have about 15 minutes to shop in there and I wanna get at least like eight things. So hopefully I can get at least eight things and get out of there in about 15 minutes. We'll see. They let everyone in early again and I wasn't paying attention. This was the second time that they let people in before 8 o'clock when it opened and I wasn't paying attention because I was in the car hanging out with my family. And so again, I was late to get all the good stuff. And I'm telling you, people literally run in here and get all the good stuff. So sometimes it's hard to find good things. But in this shopping trip, I did find at least eight things. You'll see exactly how many things I got. But I got some really awesome stuff that I cannot wait to share with you. This vintage Crayola tin was from 1991. It had a bunch of crayons in it still, which I think is so cool. But I didn't want to pay for a bunch of crayons. So I just got the tin and I will clean this up and sell it as it is. These two pieces I found separately, but they obviously are the same thing it's broken and needs some help <laughs> but i think we can fix it i just need to remove the screws out of the back here and reattach it and maybe give it a nice paint job but i thought this was adorable it's a rabbit and i will i don't think i'm going to change a single thing about this it's just perfectly aged i might straighten up its whiskers but how cool, it's a double-sided bunny sign that would be perfect for putting in the garden or even in your home. My husband took over for this section here and he's gonna take out some of the screws that were holding this together. And one of the screw heads broke off while he was doing this. So then he had to use some pliers to pull it out. And then he reattached it with a new screw and pre-drilled the hole before he screwed that in. And it was nice and sturdy, good as new.
Now that my husband Manny got that all put back together, I'm going to paint it with some silk all-in-one paint so that way I don't have to do paint and then a clear coat. And the color I think is called Anchor. It is just a beautiful black color and I wanted to go back to the original finish. This reminds me of something you would see somewhere in England hanging from a historic building, maybe like a tavern or some kind of cute little shop. I, I've never been to England, so I'm just imagining here like a storybook. And I do have some viewers here that I talk to quite often in my uh, live chats when my videos premiere that are from England. So like Andrea is one of them. Andrea, if you're watching, tell me, would this, <laughs> would this be somewhere in England hanging from some amazing historic building? But I wanted to just keep with that classic look that it had and stay true to the original color. And I think it just also makes for an easier project as well. But the rest of my things that I'm going to be doing today also go with kind of that English cottagey vibe that I'm doing with this first DIY. And I hope you guys are really enjoying all the cottagey things today. And let me know in the comments down below what you think of this bunny sign. I thought it was so unique. I also wanted to update everyone on my online shop. So... <laughs> I've been telling you guys, it's going to be out soon, it's going to be out soon, and then it's like one thing after another after another. So we were sick about two weeks ago, and now two of my kids are sick, actually three. My oldest daughter just started getting sick as well. So it's just been kind of chaotic, and then they also have their state testing for school this month, and it's just been all over the place, and I haven't really had a chance yet to finish it. But then I figured out that I can just make my own website. So I was thinking of selling on a different website and not really sure, like I had started it and didn't really finish it. And then I kind of always had this dream of having my own website and I never knew how to make one. And so I finally got a hold of a company that I think can really help me make my own website and so today's sponsor is Squarespace and Squarespace has helped me make my own website finally and on my website I'll give you a quick sneak peek of what it looks like. So using their blueprint AI I was able to create all of this that you're seeing right now. I have an about me section. I can even link all my social medias on here which I really needed a place where all of my information was in one place for people who are trying to look up like how do they email me? How do they um, get a hold of my Facebook. I even posted my first ever blog post, which is like such a dream come true that I, I actually have a blog to post. <laughs> I just can't believe it. But you can also sell things on here. You can do like even digital products. You can make a membership for your website and they will help you make your whole website, which is what I needed because I literally know nothing about making websites, like literally nothing. <laughs> so if you're interested in starting your own website, go to squarespace.com and do the free trial. Check it out and see if you like it. And when you're ready to launch, you can go to squarespace.com backslash desert DIY and save 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. I hope you really have fun making your website because I sure did. But let's get back to shopping. I found this super cute but pretty busted up little stool next. This cute little yellow stool I think is perfect in the color that it is. The only problem is that it's pretty gross dirty. So I think in order for me to really give it a good makeover, I'm gonna have to sand it a little bit. Plus, it needs a big time repair on this leg. It's not very often that I buy a piece of paper, but I thought this was such a beautiful pattern that it would look really nice framed in some of my art or maybe I could decoupage it onto something. The more that I got creative with this stool and this piece of paper, I realized I could totally decoupage it onto here. But first, my husband is going to take care of this repair that needs to happen. Whoever repaired this, I'm not even sure what happened. <laughs> I honestly, I feel like they probably need a hug <laughs> because things did not work out how they probably planned that it would. I don't know what they were aiming at, but they sure missed like four nails <laughs> going into this leg. I don't know how that happened. And we can't really pull them out because they're the really grippy nails. And I, my husband and I were both afraid that if he pulled them out, it was going to just break that whole piece of wood. So he's using the Dremel to cut the nails off. And then he's going to go from the top and pull them all out and do some repairs around the whole thing in general. Just simple repairs. If you don't have a Dremel, 
boy, do you ever need one. You don't even know how bad you need one until you get one. You're going to use it on everything. <laughs> I'll, pro I'll try and find one on my Amazon store and link one on there for you if you're interested in getting the Dremel because we use ours all the time, let me tell you. Now he's putting some wood filler on to fix some of the areas that those big old nails kind of messed up. <laughs> and once that is dry, I'm just going to hand sand it using some sandpaper on a sanding block. And then it's time to get this thing painted. I have this Melange brand paint. I don't remember the color that it was in. I think it was called like Oyster or something. But I got this on clearance at a local resale shop and paint shop that is in Spring, Texas. They were closing down and had a huge sale on all of their paint supplies. So I got a whole bunch of paints for really, really cheap, really good quality ones like the Melange brand paints. And it's got a sealer in it already, so I don't need to put a sealer, but I did do two coats of it. And something else that I realized is that the piece of paper that I have is actually a wallpaper sample. So I'll show you a close-up of that when the time comes. But I'm going to decoupage that on just using some Mod Podge um, underneath and on top of it.
goodness, that turned out so cute. Uh, the next thing I thought was really cute as is, but then I realized it was damaged and missing one of the metal bells. And I also was like, hmm, should I store this until Christmas or should I just completely reuse it? Save a little money by not buying the tops and turn them into something cute. These originally had a Christmas bow top that went to them, but they were damaged. The tops had bells on them and some of the bells were missing and the wire was really bent and it just didn't look so great but I thought these are perfect for the garden and you barely have to do anything to make these look really awesome just how they are they just need a quick cleaning maybe I'll throw them in the dishwasher and get some foliage in here and it'd be perfect for decorating outside and putting fake plants in pots like these and putting them outside means I don't have to go outside and water it and my curb appeal is always looking perfect so once these were all cleaned up, all I had to do was put greenery in them. It's literally the easiest DIY you could do. This fern, it was like $5 from Walmart. It comes really flat and you have to bend all the pieces in order for it to look like this. But I have these in my front yard and they look real. And then I also have these ones that I also got from Walmart. And I think they all look so cute together. And what a simple makeover. It took me five seconds. And this is such a good example of how you can reuse something from the bins that may not be originally for this purpose but like reuse it upcycle it in a new way and give it a completely new life with a completely new use and it didn't even take much effort at all and it barely cost me anything i mean this entire trip everything that i bought today only came out to be 15 dollars and some change not bad at all i'm sure that buying these two would have cost more than 15 dollars and then the next thing I got also didn't really need any work. Look at how adorable this is. I can't believe it wasn't even broken. This buffalo check canister is perfect how it is. I wish that there was more than one of them because I only have the one. But I still think that I could make this look cute and cottagey, perfect for to today's collection of things. It has a brand on the bottom called Robert Stanley. I'll have to look that up. But it seems like it may be from like Home Goods or something. And whenever I get items like this from the Goodwill bins, just any item in general, I always clean it really well. And I think the dishwasher is a great way to do it. I actually got this idea from some of my viewers that have commented on there saying that they wash these things they thrift in their dishwasher. Some delicate stuff can go on the top rack, but none of this is really delicate other than I didn't want to wash off the paint on this tin that I got my Crayola tin but these all washed perfectly well in the dishwasher and once those were all clean all I had to do was stage them and then the Crayola box of course I'm gonna sell online I think I may keep the other things though look at how cute it is it really doesn't have like a single chip in it that I can find and I think this would look really cute decorating my kitchen or my hutch during the fall time which I know it's barely spring right now, but as a YouTuber, we have to think ahead to the next seasons, and I think fall this year is going to be epic. The next item I have is this basket, and I almost didn't get it, but then I had an idea. This broken basket, they had tried to sell for $2.99 at Goodwill, but the basket part is in great shape, so I think I'm going to just chop these handles off and give it a nice coat of paint and I think this will look really cute for a cottagey English cottage sort of style that I'm going for in today's video. Here is another example of a super easy flip or DIY. Baskets are so versatile and this one is one that you can either hang on the wall or you can have it set on a table or a shelf. Like you could decorate with this in so many different ways. But it had weird stains on it and it just was kind of ugly and broken. So I decided that I was going to paint it in that beautiful like duck egg blue color that I love so much. That's by Waverly. It's called Dusk. I don't know why it's called Dusk because it really is like a robin's egg or duck egg blue color. I love it. It's perfectly cottage or French or farmhouse. And this is the same color that I painted my lamp um, two videos ago, if you haven't checked that out. That lamp sold immediately the next day after I put it in my shop. So like I put my lamp in there at night and the next day it sold immediately. So I think people are liking this color in case you were wondering. And it's such a like neutral blue. It has a lot of gray to it, like a little bit of green to it. It's just a perfect cozy 
blue color and I just lightly brush it on both sides and now it's going to go so well with all of this vignette that I'm creating and I think that it also brings out the blue tones that are in that wallpaper that I decoupaged onto that cute little stool. But this kid lean cottage or coastal, it's something that I could see being sold even on high-end websites like Ballard Design or Pottery Barn because of that circle shape that it is and that really tight weave that it has. It looks very high quality. And now that I painted it, it looks brand new. You would never believe that I got this in the Goodwill bins. <laughs> The next thing that I found was really neat and it kind of goes for like a theme we're doing here today. There's quite a bit of birds that I'm going to be doing in my video today. This little bird cage is very dusty and dirty, but I thought that it had great bones and it even has a little bird inside there. You'll hear lots of little birds in this video, I'm sure, but it, it really just needs some updating, maybe add some other types of floral into it and then maybe find a way to secure this door a little better. Let's see what I can come up with. The more that I looked at it, the more I actually really enjoyed the simplicity of it. And I decided I don't really wanna add a lot to this. I, if anything, I just wanna subtract from it and clean it really well. So that's what I'm gonna do. This little egg obviously came from a yard sale, but I love these handmade eggs and it has this beautiful floral on there, all hand done it seems. You can tell it's all hand done. And I thought this goes perfectly with my scheme I'm doing today of like garden cottagey style. So cute. I'll most likely put this egg away with my Easter decor, but just for today, I'll add it to the vignette. Look at how cute it is. I love the colors. Periwinkle is pretty much the best color ever. So I'm glad they did it in periwinkle. I also found some string, which I think is for embroidery. Correct me if I'm wrong. I don't embroider, so I don't know. But I grabbed a few of these. I got a few of the string yarn, whatever you want to call these, in some pretty green colors. I didn't have any kind of twine in a green color and you can always use brown so I picked these up. I think I really should have got all the white as well but I was just in a rush, you know, I only had 15 minutes but still I'm glad I got these. This bag is full of little bird nests and at first I thought that it was kind of weird but then I remember that the channel Canterbury Cottage she uses tons of bird nests for stuff and I thought I could come up with something right I may not be as creative as she is because she's literally a creative genius but these are really neat they even have like a stuffing in there I feel like I could even put these outside for birds to really nest in because you can tell we have lots of birds here, but they're all natural material with like a real natural cotton inside. And then these ones are my favorite ones. I like these kind. They kind of remind me of the beehive decorations, but they all have these little hangers on them too. So maybe I could make a cool hanging decoration out of them, but there are four in total. Let's see what I can do. Originally, I wanted to hang all four in one row and create like a bird hotel. I don't know. Does that make sense to you? I thought that'd be really cute. And I had this beaded garland 
and I thought it'd be super cute to like wire them together and string those beads in between each one. But the problem is that these smaller nests that are just open on the top, they hang funny. So they don't hang straight like the other ones do, the pineapple shaped ones. So I decided to do two nests and two nests. So one pineapple one and one regular nest on one. And then the second one would be the same thing. And I'm just stringing on these black wooden beads on here because I think, first of all, it looks super cute. And it kind of gives it a little modern flair to it, a little, little modern farmhouse or something along those lines. But it also helps them stand out a little bit. If I did them in the same colored wood as the color of the nest, it would kind of blend in and you wouldn't really notice that I took the effort to add those cute wooden beads on there. And I got this uh, bead garland for like, I don't know, maybe $4 total <laughs> for all of them. They have them at Hobby Lobby and every season they come out with different color ones. So if you're interested in getting those, just go check every season, they have a different one. And then what I did to connect them is I tied on some metal wire onto the bottom of the bigger nest. And then I used that wire to tie on the string from the little nest. I hope that makes sense to you. But then that way I can hang them up and it's like a smaller bird hotel and they can hang in different directions so that way the birds kind of don't face each other. I was kind of thinking of it like when people live in apartment buildings and you don't want to look out your window and see into somebody else's house in their window, you know? So I hung them to where they would hang in different directions because I really do want these to be decorative, but also like purposefully useful. I, I said that weird, but I want them to be useful. I want birds to actually nest in them. I don't know if they will, but I'm going to leave all that cotton in there to save the birds some work and see who shows up. I can update you as spring goes on. It would be so amazing if I got hummingbirds in here. I hope I don't get woodpeckers. I don't really like woodpeckers. They just damage all my beautiful pine trees. But I really hope that I get like some blue jays or some cardinals or something beautiful in here or hummingbirds. I just adore hummingbirds. But look at how cute these turned out. This is going to be beautiful garden art for me to look out and see. And it's also something my kids are going to enjoy watching. They're going to run out there and check. Is there any birds in there yet? Is there any birds in there yet? I just know it. So we can all enjoy this DIY for more than just its decorative purpose. This next piece is so me. Speaking of adorable cottage decor, look at how sweet that is. It just needs to be washed and I think that's all you would need to do with something like this and it'll be ready to decorate with. Another option is you can either decoupage it onto something or you can cut this section out and frame it. There were a couple little yellow spots on here from God knows what so I sprayed some stain remover on there and then threw them in the wash. I just put it on my fast setting in the washer because I was excited to see <laughs> uh, it done and clean and use it in my video, but it turned out great and it washed perfectly. Gosh, I just feel like we are creating like a perfect Hallmark movie moment with all these cute, adorable, and super feminine pieces. This hat is in perfect condition, and I think that it will look adorable with a big, bold cottage style ribbon around it, maybe with a big bow as well. Or maybe even this floral here. Hmm. This pretty flower I think might look really cute in some of the pieces that I make today. Have some ideas. 
a while back I saw some of these hats in the Goodwill bins when I was doing a thrifting video and you all suggested that I should deck one out and sell it as a piece of decoration. And I did think about doing that at that time, but I wasn't too sure if people really liked that. But now I know for sure that you do. So I'm gonna take this adorable floral. It kind of looks a little bit like a hydrangea. And I'm gonna use this little skewer to poke a hole in the hat and stick the little stem of the flower in here. And then I'm gonna use two ribbons to create a little um, tie around the hat as well and I picked out colors that go with the florals that are on here and so I did white and green the green is actually a velvet and the white has a scalloped edge does it get any cuter than that I really don't think it could get any cuter than those two things put together with some flowers come on <laughs> it doesn't get any more cute chubby chic romantic spring than this but I just hot glued on that velvet ribbon onto the white scalloped ribbon so that they stayed together perfectly and didn't get all discombobulated over time and then i'm going to go around the hat and hot glue it onto the hat so it stays nice and tight and then tie a knot below the flowers and then i'm going to hot glue the flowers into the position that i think that they look best as well At this point, I'm pretty much done. And as I'm looking at it, I think like this is still worthy of wearing. Like, <laughs> doesn't have to just be decorative. It is so cute. I would consider wearing it out. Like if on a really sunny day, working in the garden, or you can hang it up on your door instead of a wreath, especially your front door. And you know what? Don't forget to decorate your back door as well. Or if you have like a backyard gate, you could put this on the gate. Just deck everything out. Why not? <laughs> The next thing I got were these wooden skewers. You already saw me use one of them for this project, but they're very versatile things. And then I also got this cute little candle stand and they had these uh, foam cones, but I already have some that I haven't used in a while, so I didn't want to pick up more. This little candle pillar stand is in a pretty silver color. And I think this would be a great piece to add something on top of like a beautiful piece of china plate or a wooden round on here something to make a cute little pedestal for whatever you want to decorate with i cleaned this up but unfortunately it had some damage to the finish that made it just look not great so i decided that whenever i'm going to make this over i'll just paint it with whatever i'm doing but then i found this in my garage which was a broken music box the music box part doesn't play and it's missing its little handle and i thought what if i added those two together so i glued it on using some e6000 i put it on the bottom first and then i sat it on there and realized it wasn't really gripping anything so then i put the glue underneath the music box and that way it was getting it was creating like a glue sandwich <laughs> if you catch my drift so it glued on really well and after i put it on both sides so something to think about if you're concerned about it sticking put glue on both sides why not glue it up make sure that thing is going nowhere and then i went with that same blue dusk blue color by waverly and it didn't do very good coverage on the first coat because it was a really shiny surface but it still only took me two coats of paint to do this and i used a really tiny brush since i had to get into all those little grooves there
Now that it's all that beautiful blue, I'm going to seal it with some clear wax. I'll link this down below in my description box, but I want to do a dark wax on here. Anytime you're going to do a dark wax or age it with a dark stain or something like that, you always have to go in with the clear first. So I'm going to use this soft wax to create this aged look on here and just create some dimension on the piece because right now it looks pretty flat. I don't know what about you, but I'm pretty sure you're thinking the same thing, which is, gosh, I hope she does some kind of wax or white wax or brown wax on here <laughs> because it's looking real flat. But now that I get that dark wax on here, I realized I wanted to create even more dimension than the dark wax was giving on its own. So I created some shadowing effects on the base of the candle stand and the base of the music stand and just a little bit more on the tops of the birds to kind of give it more of a real feather look. And now I'm just playing around with where I want to put it in the vignette and I decided to put it closer to the greenery and it looks so beautiful. You can really see the details of the birds now much more than you could in its original finish, which was pretty, but I think this looks so much better. Of course I am biased. I'm a hundred percent biased since I'm the one who made it, but you know me, I'll tell you when I think that my own stuff looks ugly because I'll admit it. <laughs> but I think the birds on the little stand there were my favorite DIY of the day. I found so many amazing things for today's 15 minute, $15 challenge. Just turned out that it was $15 as well. And I definitely got more than eight things today. I mean, it wasn't a whole lot more than eight things, but I had such a fun time. I really can't believe how great all of this turned out. And you know what else is really truly amazing is that I was able to make all of this kind of go together in one theme. These were all very random things. Like I had Christmas stuff. I had silver things. I had a hat. I had a yellow stool. I had a pink ribbon on that birdcage. And then I had buffalo check. It may not look 100% together, but it still looks great together, especially in a resale setting. These are all going to look great together in my shop. And I am so glad that you all are here today to watch this. I can't wait to hear your opinions on all these DIYs in the comments down below. And just to prove, I only spent a little over $15 on this. Here is the receipt, $15.46. And that is after taxes, you guys. I had so much fun today. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked what you saw, don't forget to hit subscribe down below. We post new videos every Wednesday and Sunday, and we will see you next time. Bye.